Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the Group D final match between Gabby Asner's Lizardman and Zerpils and his Skaven. And as you can see, they've already kicked off and played a little bit of the first turn. Unfortunately, they did start five minutes early, so I was taken a little bit by surprise. This is the thing, you know, unfortunately. In Blood Bowl 2, there's a catch-up thing where you could watch a live game and go back to the start and then watch it on replay till you caught up. Unfortunately, that is not in Blood Bowl 3 at the moment. Hopefully, that will um, come into play. So let's get a let's get a bearings on the situation, first of all. So um, Zerpel's on six points. If Gabby Ass wins, he may be able to join him. Zerpel's situation is unassailable, really, because he's got six. He's got six touchdowns, so he's almost, almost guaranteed in the playoffs. All right, all but all but mathematically, yeah, all but mathematically, right? Essentially, he's he's qualified. He's got a sprint gutter, not a sidestep. Leader strip ball wrestle block juggernaut. Oh, that was a dub skull rerolled into pushes. Flip me, guys. That's brutal for the for the lizards. One reroll already gone. Um, only twelve players, but lots of rerolls, and an apple for Zerpils. Uh, what's he lost then? Oh, he's lost a storm vermin skill. Yeah, he's lost a storm vermin skill. I think that's probably the one to lose. Actually, the storm vermin skill. I like I like the I like what he's done there. Though I would have taken sidestep, not sure, not sprint. He should not have been letting the gutter get punched there, I would say. Um, and then Gabias has gone a bit of an interesting build. Hasn't gone the six block. He's gone for a guard, crocs, and a sneaky git. Skink, who surely is going to foul him. I mean, if you've got sneaky git, how can you not foul a gutter runner, right? I mean, I guess he's already stunned, so. Um, so, yeah, there you go. There are the teams. Right, when there, when there's not much happening, I mean here, right, they're probably just thinking for a bit. I'll show you the group, there you go. Zerpel, six points, six touchdowns. Gabias and Ceramol, both on two touchdowns and three points. But obviously, uh, Ceramol, more favoured versus Slade Black Mage, who's lost both of his games so far, than Gabias is versus Zerpel's. Look at that, nothing changed. So, uh, so this is a tough ask for Gabias, even, he, like, first of all, he's got to win this game. And then he's got to, like, better Ceramol. Oh, okay, I, I, I went back too hastily. I, oh, no, so Ceramol has conceded more touchdowns, right? Two more. So he's just, so Gabias doesn't need to better his result. He just has to score as many touchdowns as Ceramol. But also he has to win. And essentially, neither of them can catch up to Zerpels, right? They'd have to score four touchdowns. So, but basically, I mean, you basically can't win four nil, right, with with lizards or undead. So, while Zerpils isn't technically, mathematically qualified, he he basically is. Wow, toxic Dimmy, don't make me ban you. And, uh, right, hello surveillance, hello punter, thank you very much for staying fantastic for two cool beaver pregnancies. And, uh, oh, I'll deny that, what what you uh, posted there, punter, no offence. Um, hello Cosmigo, hello Baron Bucky, I think, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with sidestep, better for the one turn and better in general, especially when you combine it with the frenzy, um, very, very big. And, uh, how old a peg? And yeah, please, Dimmy, try not to be, try not to be a toxic dirtbag all your life, Dimmy. <laughs> I, may, I must have just mentioned this uh, once or twice while you were watching, and then, um, and then you've, you've run with this as a thing that I always say. I don't, you're the only one mentioning it, Dimmy. There's a potential to come and harass with skinks. Certainly the potential to smash a gutter runner. I think you at least have to smash a gutter runner here. And by default that will let you, you know, at least threaten a tiny bit with a skink, right? Just one skink through, three dice. Or it could come down here and smash this one. This is probably the better one, right? The strip ball. Oh, that's a really juicy one. 
he gets the push there. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, the problem is this is a blockless Saurus. And he's only got two rerolls. Oh my god, he's dub skulled. He's dub skulled twice in two turns. And he has two blockless Saurus. And of course, the Croxagore is also blockless. So, Gabias is in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Even though it doesn't really look it. <laughs> the lack of rerolls with an inferior, in my opinion, build of only four block is, uh, is not good. He does get this foul now, though. And gets a KO. Now, Sneaky Git may have had an effect there, right? Because he might not have made that foul without Sneaky Git. A one assist foul on a gutter. So, you know, maybe he got that removal because of Sneaky Git. Gave him the confidence to make the right play. <laughs> All about the confidence, as Dimmy knows. Hello, Quincy. Right, um, I should go in here just in case. Wait a minute. Right. Just in case. Okay, so now, yeah, I was a little bit rushed to start the stream and didn't have everything properly set up, but now we're all set up. And yeah, they did start early, right? They did start five minutes early, unfortunately. So, but we didn't miss much of the first turn. Obviously, don't know who won the toss or anything. Oh, I didn't do the, uh, didn't do the background information to that. Let's let's do that now. Uh, Gabias is Spanish, qualified through the NBB on PC, and Zerpils is oh no, he's actually German but living in Austria. He said, and he qualified on PlayStation, the B and T. Road to the World Championship. Of course, next year there won't be separate PlayStation and PC qualifiers because everything will be cross platform, I'd imagine. So, there you go. No, I mean, I, most things are cross platform. I'm not sure whether the, <laughs> whether the Super League is cross platform or not, but uh, there's, I don't think there's any need for it to be seen. <laughs> You know, going by the nature of the Super League. <laughs> Banter. <laughs> hello, Calcium Kaz. What a legend. Oh, hello. Sorry, Kaz. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Sh sh do you want me to contact... Uh, do you want me to contact... Uh, Skuro to... <laughs> <laughs> to confirm or deny... <laughs> PlayStation dominance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, Azenth X. Um, the game that I had was an absolute thriller of a game. I was on the edge of my seat throughout. It was the, it was the most stressful game of Blood Bowl I've ever played. I'll tell you that. And. Uh, I guess, you know, by the time it's on YouTube, everyone should have watched it by now on YouTube. You could have watched it on the VOD, but yeah, it's not on YouTube yet. Um, I can tell you I did win. You can probably tell by the fact I'm happy, but I did win, and I am in the, t I am in the final 32. So, I'm not, for, well, not that's a lie. No, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm in the final 32. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, final 32. I thought for a second, wait a minute, I'm not I'm in the final 64, but no, there was 64. I'm in the final 32. Very happy in second place, but uh, still, you know, I it was so, so close to just going out, right? Like having to win versus Orcs was really, really tough. <laughs> Hello, Big Chichi, you can, you can. I was, oh my god, that was, I was really, uh, really feeling the pressure. Oh my goodness, he's made a third dub skulls. By the way, I would have probably tried to surf this guy, right? Could have blitzed him, pushed him to there, and then blocked him and then surfed him, but uh, obviously would have dub-skulled. 
with a block guy as well. Why does he even have block players? He's dub he's dub skull three times, and each time it was a player with block. They weren't even one in nines. You know, he's got he's got three blockless hitters, and he's got four block full hitters, and he's literally dub skulled with a blockers three times. That is incredibly unlucky for Gary S. Good big Chichi, good. I I am really happy. I am. I am really happy. I really. The funny thing is, it's not even the like you know being happy at doing well. I'm just, I just hate losing. <laughs> it was the thought of like not qualifying. I was like, oh my god, you know, I can't, I can't commentate on all these games and be like, oh, that's not what I would have done, and oh, he could have done this safe move first and stuff, and then I just go out instantly. Do you know what I mean? I was like, oh god, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to get through at least the first round. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, Uber Defel. Yeah, the sneaky git has has removed a gutter runner and all of his all of his lizards have done is rolled up skulls. His block lizards. Just should have just gone seven mighty blow like Mr. Page. Excited to see uh, the final games of that group, by the way. This is this isn't great. It's just like a DACA, but where you get punched instead, isn't it? Though I guess it's it's sucked off the rerolls, hasn't it? And now he's just I guess waiting for Gabby to roll a one in nine or something, and then he can just uh, run up, hand off to a gutter, run straight through. GG. Um, I don't know that they're scheduled yet. They might have scheduled. I can. Uh, I'll I'll post my. Uh, I'll post my thing. And then you can check it out and tell me. <laughs> um not being able to stack dirty and sneaky is no it was you couldn't have got on an hooligan or a uh, or a um, death roller I asked that question I asked that question and uh, they said they said um, <laughs> they said no I, like, I was never going to do it, but I just wanted a clarification. So, yeah. Yeah, they did really hate on the goblins. Poor old goblins, they're absolutely screwed. But I guess it was to stop the roller rather than the goblins. But yeah, I mean, goblins and flings were basically banned by default, not having access to inducements. No. Dubs. Not sent off because it's sneaky good, keeps him on the pitch. So it's had an actual quantifiable effect. Does fall. That makes it. Oh, he doesn't even block with the crocs. I was going to say that makes it not a 3D for the crocs. Because that he doesn't take it. And it's still a frenzy trap, isn't it, for the rogues? That's pretty decent follow, to be fair. So we've got this guard is pressured, isn't he, into a serve. This guy's stunned. And while he can turn the corner a bit, it's not that good, is it? Not the easiest drive of Zerpel's life, despite Gabias using both rerolls on dub skulls. And then dub skulling again. <laughs> But yeah, you'd imagine 
you know, dice will fail at some point, and then there'll be an easy touchdown for Zerpils. So he gets away with a frenzy trap. Yeah, it, it, I mean the first one was like the first block that he made, but yeah, the second one he probably didn't need to re-roll. So that that was huge. That wasn't it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a dodge double rush. I'll be honest, I was doing other things. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible for him getting that guy out of the danger zone and back. He's just got to be really, really safe now, hasn't he? This is the thing. He's just got to be like mega, giga safe. That's his problem. Absolutely as safe as possible. You know, he, he should have done. He should have clamped down on one reroll, right? He should have absolutely clamped down after using the first reroll, and then being able to eat the second and the third double skulls. Um, hello Salakas, hello Wartland, hello Christopher B. And they, they weren't too scared of Morg, Cindy Flynn's, anything like that, Uber de Phil. Um, what happened was it just limitations of the client is that you can't roster inducements right in like NAF style, so it was it was too difficult to do. Um, I don't think Roller would have been that OP, but I think they just didn't want to take any chances. Can't get this bloody wrestler down. Well, I mean, could have got him down. Could have taken the board down and fouled the sneaky git, but didn't. And so a three-way tie is possible, yes. Sarnum, that is possible. However, um, Zerpils is on plus six touchdowns. So Zerpils is definitely three. And not plus six, scored six. Zerpils has scored six. So Zerpils is absolutely, he's already won two, he's 100% qualified in reality. Um, so what we've got is Gabias has got to win and score. Um, he's got to win he's just got to win and then Ceramol has to win his game and score more touchdowns than Gabias does or draw if Gabias draws or you know maybe even lose if Gabias loses so we'll see yeah if you go to <laughs> that's actually that so that sheet you've got to go from that sheet that I've linked I should I could have the nuffle thing as well I could I could link the nuffle page as well here here's the nuffle thing um so yeah basically Gabias has to win and he's just got to hope that either Ceramol doesn't win or doesn't score more touchdowns than him. The hard thing he has to do is beat Rats <laughs> that have won both the games so far. Kaz is him, and that's going to get pretty difficult because he's out of rerolls and he's 
hasn't appled that because it was a 37.5% chance to work and he did not risk it failing. So, whew, that's a tough one, isn't it? I wouldn't have made the decision quite as quickly as him. <sighs> Flip me. This, I, I, do you know what? I would hate to apple this, but you probably have to, right? Losing a Saurus. I guess it's a blockless Saurus. It's still really bad, though. So this is um, a very easy thing to do, isn't it? I wonder if he's seen it, because he's just moved that Saurus. Oh my god, he hasn't seen it. No way. No way. So what I would have done is skink in here, block this guy, chain this guy back, blitz the ball, right? At least put the skink in and make the block, and then if you power, blitz the ball. I think that's too strong. Yep, he's got a guard, Crocs. And a sneaky get skink. That works, doesn't it? Block him, and then if it's a power, you push him back, and he just hit the ball. Wow. Wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. 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 That was... I mean, I, I, I'm sure that's worth it. It has to be worth it. Yeah, it sucks, you know, doing the 1 in 30... The, the 1 in 9 block. And it only pays off if you power him, but like, I feel like you just have to. So I guess he didn't see it. I mean, he could have chosen not to do it. He could have chosen not to do it because, you know, it is. You would have to commit a skink. You'd have to commit a skink. Although he could have put the skink there and another Saurus in here. So it wouldn't wasn't super committing. It was mostly committing to a risky one in nine before some safe moves and he only got the push anyway so he definitely did the right thing now <laughs> probably oh my god he rolled another double skull at least this time it was only a one in nine because this was a blockless saurus but it was versus a blockless line rat so it still was a dub skull he's rolled four dub skulls and now we're on turn seven and the rats can just run through. But there is, there are still skinks to cover. They, they've got no field control, have they? They're down a blitz from the gutter. They've removed a saurus. But... That's the blitz gone. <gasps> In the top skulls! No way! Oh, wow! 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 Amazing! Amazing! Well, we're definitely going to get two dice on the ball this turn. And no scoring threats for the rats. Flip me. Flip me. That's unbelievable, isn't it? But obviously, his armor double one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to say first. Thing. I'd have actually put this one in scoring range first thing, um, so that you know, because this one could like be uh, making recovery or screening or whatever. Yeah, he probably should have just at least moved one, got her into scoring range. Yeah. Yep. You're right, Max. Probably should have done 
some kind of safe move first. Um, because, you know, that is 3% from disaster, right? With it being a big guy. Can't re-roll it, but doesn't need to. Gets the knockdown. Oh! Nightmare scatter. But, well, he can scatter it, can't he? He can rely on the Croxigo to get another scatter. Or you can leave the ball on the ground versus rats. Mm, I think it's probably better just having an extra scoring threat rather than just like facing the gutter. Oh, fouls the roger. Nothing. I think I would have liked the braver play of Croc's activation, but I mean, we've just seen the Rat Ogre activation being a killer, so completely understandable not wanting to. Yeah, indeed, Udafel, right? It makes complete sense to not rely on him. I completely understand that. I think it's probably the, you know, the higher percentage play, but um, it's, it's, you know, of course. Yeah. And you, and you can think that you would do it from, like, watching it now, right? From watching it now, you think, oh, I'd block with the Crocs. But, of course, once you're in the game, you're like, oh, no, if I fail, then, then this is free, and then you can get the ball and run over at the left, and, you know, and you see, you know, it's a bit different. Yeah, they can't score, it's true. But you can score the next turn, right? Him staying there is, is controlling players for next turn, and then next turn. If it was turn eight, you'd have definitely made it, right? Because you've been trying to score. So turn eight, you hundred percent make that block for the scatter, and then try to get. But you know, what if it? What if he does the block, scatters onto the gutter, and then he just runs away, and uh, and you can't score? Oh wow, he's dub scored. Just quietly, that would have been a dub score if he blocked for the crocs. Maybe. <laughs> How many dub scores in this? Six dub scores in this half between both sides. Six dub scores. That's unbelievable. Push. Into the push. Oh, oh was that the video you like with it? The, the mummy that just couldn't rush. <laughs> there was there was lots of ones for the troll, wasn't there? The troll didn't double one, but the troll just continuously won for the whole half <laughs> against me. Uh, I'm not sure that was one two. That was worse, right? You could have just gone one two. Two's gone one, two, three, four. This doesn't matter. As soon as he stopped moving afterwards. Okay. Well, you really want to hit the ball on three dice with block, and you really want follow up hits. So by far the best thing you can do <laughs> is, <laughs> is uh, rely on a crux hit, but he really doesn't want to do that, right? He really, 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 really doesn't want to rely on a crux hit. But... That would be the way, right? You... you, you block this guy and you crocs block and then you blitz him on 3D and you can blitz him up to hit this front follow up hit but um he's figuring that out now I think and yep here we go he's got the power oh okay he's pushed him down I don't like this because you don't get the follow up hit but you do get potentially a better scatter I guess we only get 2D. Gets the board down. Okay, well it's not it's not the worst, is it? It's 
It's not the worst. So what's this like? Two dodges. One, two, three, four, five. Two dodges. Five plus pickup. Three plus handoff. And he dub skulled again. Five dub skulls for the lizards. Five dub skulls for the lizards. Two for the Skaven and five for the lizards. Uh, right, well, while I'm setting up here, I'll show you the table again. So this is the situation. Zerpils, six points, six touchdowns. He's definitely through, even if he loses this. Um, if he draws, he'll win the group. So he's got something to play for. If he, if he at least draws, he'll win the group. Well, no, he's, got, he's won the group anyway. Sorry. He's won the group anyway. I don't know why I said that. He's won the group, right? He's got six touchdowns. He's definitely won the group. There's no chance of Ceremony winning 5-0. So, um, yeah, there you go. And Ceram So, Gabias has got the same touchdowns as Ceramol. But Ceramol's... And, and he's conceded less than Ceramol. So, Ceramol has to beat Zerpil's result. I am Fluffy Brito, yes. Yes. Uh, it'll be on YouTube soon. Funny enough, it'll be on YouTube already when this is on YouTube. But um, in actual reality land, um, wait, it might already be on. No, I think it's coming on tomorrow. I think it's coming on tomorrow on YouTube. And uh, whew, yes, it was. Uh, it was. It was an unbelievably stressful game. Unbelievable. So you know, all these people, all these people who scoff at playoff nerves. Let me tell you that that game was outrageous um, that I played versus two mission. I guess it was similar for him, right? It was kind of easier for him because he needed a draw, whereas I needed the win. I think that's why I felt it more because like I had to win or I'm out. Whereas it's never it's never been like that before, right? Because in other knockout formats, there's generally overtime, right? So. So, like, generally, if you draw, you've still got at least a chance in overtime, whereas this was just knowing that I had to win was uh, pretty brutal. Really bad being down on Saurus, but he's got 11 players at least, and he did stop the Skaven, right? So he could potentially win this. You'd imagine he won't roll five double skulls again, but you never know. Really, really, really would have liked to have seen a cage before blocking, especially after all those dub schools in the first half. You would have thought he would have uh, solidified the cage before rolling dice, but apparently not. There we go. Should have done that before. And there we go. Well done. Well done, Gavias. <laughs> Just in the nick of time. <laughs> in the nick of time, he did his, he did his uh, safe moves. But wow. Wow. That's only six for him, isn't it? I think that's six for him and two for two for Zerpils and six for Gavias. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It, seeing seeing Total's a bit harsh on, on Gabby, I see he's rolled six <laughs> and Serpils only has two. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> exactly, punter, exactly, right? Like, you know, I, I I had my critical fails versus Truk and my bunch of Kaz versus uh Calathorn, and then my game versus Tumish. Um, his troll rolled a one six times in a row. <laughs> then he failed a cr critical rush. 
you know. So I definitely had the better dice in my uh, in my third game. For sure, I had the best dice in that one. So that was nice, I have to say. Obviously, I'm just going to blitz him with block. I'd shuffle the cage up. This is a slight problem, isn't it, this guy? He does have the Croxigo, can move. So he could have done something a little bit different, or still can. Oh, Croxigo fails. Classic. This is like a decent strip shot on here, right? I don't feel like there's going to be a place where he can go that doesn't allow a decent strip shot unless he makes the dodge out with the last king. Dipping into his time bank for the first time. Zerbal's already two minutes in it. Uh, Gabby has didn't have much chance to go into his time bank, of course, because he was busy rolling six double skulls. <laughs> so, much easier to end your turn on time when you uh, when you only roll double skulls. Hello, Razzle. We're certainly winning more than uh, Gabby Ass is. Well, the, to be fair, he defended the score, right? He defended the score. Despite rolling five double skulls in the first half. And largely he defended it because Zerpels rolled a critical double skull on his Rat Ogre. Incredible amount of skulls. This has got to be the most dub skulls in a game thus far. Has to be. Well, I mean, in the World Cup, obviously, there's been other games with more dub skulls. With like millions of Blood Bowl games having taken place, probably. That's definitely millions of games, isn't it? It's got to be. But has based the ball, but from behind, isn't quite as good. You know. Oh. <laughs> it's not good, is it? It's not good because uh, <laughs> yes, yes, he is giving them all the chains, yeah. And he's got so too many players. Like this is the thing, like this guy's stunned. So he's got like four, essentially five players behind the ball. And he's cause this guy's stunned, he's only got five players in front of the ball. So it's pretty easy to if he does get himself free, it's pretty easy to go into a safe place, so yeah, not not the best, not the best uh, ball attack, I would say. It's the pow. Don't know where he's going with the ball, really, but. He's got loads of players free. Well, I'll say loads. Some. Some players free. The stun helps. Oh, got to reroll that. A blockless block. I think he wasn't really thinking there. You know, he had some players free. He could have just secured the ball. 
Still not really thinking. And uh, now rebases the ball carrier. And we'll have to block him with block, you would think. Nope. Nope, he's just pushed himself into a ball carrier block. Well, it's not what I would have done. Let me just say, it's not what I would have done. Oh, he's got the sneaky git. Okay, he's still got the sneaky git. Okay, it's still not great. Flip me. Okay, so that means he can move the move the skink across one. Because the killer was this, right? Yeah, so now at least it's not that. But um, this guy's here. Which is a problem. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's a problem. I mean, he's actually got to use a lot of gutter runners to do anything here, so he's not going to have the best recovery. But, things can happen. Things can very much happen. That's, I mean, that's true, Razzle, but, you know, things can happen. <laughs> Something might happen. The problem is, you see, don't, don't want to avoid any controversy of, you know, people saying, oh, you know, Jimmy said this and then he did it, you know, like, I'm not, I really don't believe that anybody's watching for mad tips, right, in a high pressure environment. Uh, I don't think anybody watching will need the tips or want them or be watching for that reason. But somebody mentioned it in one of the games, uh, one of the Chalice games. And I thought that, I mean, this is obviously what he was had to do, right? Fill in these two. Block, chain, push, roger. Um, and, or here. Or maybe up there is better. Here you could put in a gutter to make it three dice. On the first one. But if you'd gone there... You could have just, uh, you could have got a better scatter, right? You could have pushed him to there and then powered him to here. <laughs> and uh, and then you could have, could have just gone and scored. Who knows? Um, but yeah, he does come in with a roll good. Three dice, only gets the push into only a two. Only the push again, or he could take. He could. He could not use juggernaut, right? He could not use juggernaut and get the knockdown. But he doesn't go for that. <laughs> That's pretty funny, punter. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's a bit funny, you know, because I, I thought, like, imagine, imagine, like, you know, um, exactly, big Chi Chi. Yeah, exactly. No, the thing is, like, Johnny, you know I mean, like. If, if, you know, like, say there was a tough one turn and I called out exactly how I do it and then somebody used five minutes of time bank and then did it that way, I could imagine the person who got scored on feeling aggrieved. And I don't want that to happen even if it wasn't, you know... I wouldn't believe that it would have been anything to do with me. Um, I still don't want somebody to be aggrieved. This is insane, yeah. What an insane board position. 12 squares all full of players. And in fact, not, not only those 12, there's also like another 5 squares. There's 17 <laughs> adjacent squares. Or actually, everything's adjacent, isn't it? Essentially. This, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Gets his big stun. Like, you've literally just got to use your camera angle to get around and try and work out what the hell's happening here. <laughs> I mean, this is probably good for the rats, right? 
Oh, that's a huge... No, it's not that huge because there's a player there, so he can't run out. This is probably good for the rats. I guess he can probably he can probably beat off more more stuff this turn. And the the stunned roger is very nice, right? That helps him loads the roger being stunned. It was a trap chain, I yeah. Twenty two squares full of it. Well, it was in one. It was in one. They were all like based directly, right? They were all based directly. But this this twelve this this twelve squares was wild. Why is the ball still not safe? Yeah, apparently Gabias is not a safe moves first kind of chap, you know? Despite despite rolling five dub skulls in the first half. <laughs> he thought safe moves sometimes. <laughs> and this is still not safe. Like this is I'm, I'm actively less safe than, <laughs> than nearly it was. Yes, I would have definitely just been fouling the ogre. Yeah, the rogue, a hundred percent, just foul the rogue. He said he was relying on a dodge to make it safe, which he got. Yeah, it was actively less safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just one across, I think, was the best, wasn't it? One across, and yeah, he's got, like, you know, maybe an uphill or whatever to get in here. Um, but one up and then foul. Stun. Oh, no, he kills him, but does he get sent off? He does. So I didn't really like fouling him when he's already stunned, right? The, the great thing about Sneaky Git is... The worst thing happens is you get sent off for a stun. So fouling a stun player is a lot worse because now it means you can get sent off on armor essentially, right? Whereas, so like, I really don't like fouling stun players with a sneaky git, but the apple is a great apple decision, I think, to uh, keep the roger in. It's not easy to get the strip in this square, is it? This is where you want to go in to hit the ball. And it's not easy to get the strip. This is a long way around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then when you put it out there, then there's just the wrestler. So he could come in like this way and then maybe get it with the blocker. It's not, it's not a great ball sack though. Two D with a guard blitzer, you just go straight in for the five the five plus for two D. Yeah, I don't hate it. Yeah, I don't hate it. And then if you get it, he's out there both blitzed, you've got these two around to get it. I wouldn't have hated the 5 plus. I honestly wouldn't have even hated the 5 plus in for a 2D. It's not bad, is it? You've got 5 re rolls. Like it's an I win button at the end of the day, right? That's like 55% to win almost. Because now you've got 2 dice on the ball with a re roll, and the push out is a really good direction. Yeah, 5 plus with 5 re rolls does look pretty appealing, doesn't it? Yeah. He had four and then he won one off the kickoff event as well. Well, he's got three plus leader. Well, that turn of pretty much nothing means that the uh, lizards can reconnect and uh, move downfield quite a long way.
and have a pretty safe cage and three dice the stripper. <laughs> so pretty disastrous turn for Zerples there, I would say. Yep. Of course, we're not going to make the cage first. We're just going to roll a two dice block <laughs> with one reroll available. <laughs> Gabby ass steadfast in his refusal <laughs> to make safe moves first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand where he's coming from, I really do, but like, you have to make safe moves first with one reroll, I think. I think you absolutely have to. And versus rats, yeah, yeah, versus rats of all teams. And with one or zero rerolls. Yeah. Yeah, so a double whammy there. Funny enough, he's going for the standard Vengabus, which isn't that good here. He wants the driver, right? What what he really what would be better would be the skink here, the Saurus at the front, and then swap these two, right? So that the the there's an extra tackle so on. Like at, at the moment, this is a five plus in the back for a one D, which is pretty risky. So he could move this back and cut that off, but then you know he could have it so that he was closer to the end zone with more Saurus in the face. Yes, when it's absolutely blinding obvious. It didn't open anything up, like it like the block didn't change where the where the big cage was gonna be or anything, right? It's not like you know, sometimes, you know, let's say you're gonna blitz this guy and if you pound you move everybody through. Like which he actually probably could have done, to be fair, he probably could have blitzed this guy and moved moved everybody through here. So he didn't leave this source behind, but I like getting away from the ogre anyway, Roger. So um Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a bit too risky. I think, he, I think he should definitely go for this. So the idea, um, Ralmo fan, except he hasn't done it. <laughs> the idea would be this guy would be a guard player, or you would have this spot filled in, and um, and then any square that you're hitting the skink from. He's got a defensive assist from this skink, so it'd be an it would be a two dice his pick. But because he's left this route in the back, um he could still get one dice, so Yeah. The big K the big cage is to like stop against, you know, war dancer strip balls mostly, historically. But you can use it versus, you know with a with, because he's a skink it kind of works against gutter runners, right? What did he blitz? I guess this skink. Didn't go for the ball sack. I guess what he's doing here is he just needs the draw. He's just going to save all five rerolls for the one turn. Yeah, yeah, it was above. It was directly above the Crocs, wasn't it? And now it's not. Maybe he's just trying to keep his gutters alive and score his one turn. But then, I haven't said that, he's just exposed the sprinter to be the obvious blitz target. So, yeah. <laughs> So, I'm not the biggest fan of completely exposing your sprinter now. Wow. But he does roll a bunch of dice to protect the sprinter and get in front of the ball. Fixed. <laughs> Casual Skaven things.
And now all of a sudden it's getting tricky for him again, right? This guy's tagged out. So he's now he's only got four players unless he dodges the skink in. Oh yeah, the other way was just a three three it was just a three three two, right? Because the crocs were stupid. Ah, so he's blocked the skink free. So saving that dodge does mean that he can uh maybe make a safe cage. Like here he can't make the cage first, right? Here he's got a blitz and if he gets a pow re cage and if he doesn't get the pow then make a you know like advance less like so this this is one where it's fair not to to leave the ball you know exposed at some stage oh wow he's only moved the skin to there so I guess he's just gonna stay where he is as far as the cage is concerned yeah didn't even blitz, did he? Didn't even blitz. So he could have blitzed with his Saurus and like gone one, two, three, four, five, six or something. I I liked by f after freeing this skink, I liked uh the problem is if you move this guy over you're completely exposing the ball, right? But you could have moved somebody up, three dice this guy, and then if it works, run up and kick like you know, if you power and stun him. Then you can make a cage here. If you don't, you just go back and cage there. Chalice nerves. I can confirm. I can confirm that the nerves are horrendous. Yeah, no, Bron. He just blocked. He just blocked, but he could have blitzed, right? He, he didn't make a blitz. So the block on the rogue could have been a blitz. And then he could have gone two, three, four, five, and based him afterwards. Oh, wow. Okay, he comes in for the strip this turn, gets the push. Because he left that weak last turn, he kept it weak. This is what he should not have done. He should have not have had the weak link. I called out last turn, and this turn, he has gone for it. Didn't go for it last turn. And now, he got the best possible scatter. Um, three squares. Any of these three are perfect, aren't they, actually? Yeah, he had to, he had to fill in the back. And if you're going to fill in the back, you might as well fill in the front, right? Because then you get the then you get the ball further forward as well. Okay, yes, yes, the best the best scatter is this guy, and he doesn't catch it, and then it goes out there. Yes, that is the absolute best scatter. Or any or either of these two. Or no, no, the best scatter is onto the gutter doesn't catch it, onto the saurus doesn't catch it, onto the line rat doesn't catch it, comes out to here. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the ball and he hands it off shadowing failed what so he's got the ball on a blodger and he's got a bit of a cage for it as well But yeah, against rats, that 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 was you know he did the kind of right thing of a Venga bus, but he forgot the driver. You've got to fill that square in, or have a guard here, right? If the Crocs had been this, if this guy had been the Crocs, it would have been an uphill. Even then, it's not good because it's a five plus in. But you know. not <laughs> like it would have been a five plus in the front as well but i mean like, what can you do like there's something to be said for the h cage right where you just have three and three and then to dodge in it's like a six plus but even that's a 30 percent, isn't it and then they can get a 1d on you <laughs> well i did say j5 that the driver should should have been in the front. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, that's a nice cage, isn't it? Good, good turn. Good, really good turn from Zerpils. Well played. And, uh, hello, J5. <laughs> Is he going to dodge to there? No. Reroll. Oh, he was blocking with a skink. So what's this guy going to do then? Is he going to double rush, hit the gutter, and then the crocs is going to base? He's going to double rush, blitz this guy, and then the crocs bases is his plan. Dodge bases, then the crocs dodge bases. I, I guess that's what his plan is. <laughs> Needs a scoring threat, just quietly. Has to win this game. Base with the crocs. Oh no, he could. He could dodge rush, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, rush. That's really good. Uh, except he just blocks him and goes away. It's not that good. So even getting the crocs in wasn't going to be that good. This guy has to get in range, right? So that's a huge mistake. I, I did it myself in a game the other day. Uh, I think it was the first one, wasn't it? I think it was versus the undead. I did this. I did the same thing. I just tried to protect the score. In my defence, I didn't want to get scored on um, because I could have lost. For Gabias, I actually know. To be fair, Gabias doesn't know the result of the Ceremon game, right? So if he thinks this gives him a chance of not losing, it's better. But it's not doing a whole lot, is it, positionally, this uh, Chameleon Skink. So we'd have been probably much better off making a scoring threat. But it is very easy to lose track of the turn count and stuff. Now he's blocked back. He's going to surf that skink, is what he's going to do, isn't it? With a ball carrier. That's the play. No, this was, this was wildly incorrect. Wildly incorrect. Wildly incorrect. He had to he had to dodge out one two three surf. Now he cannot score versus you, and you have. I mean, he's through anyway, right? He's through anyway. To be fair, Zerpils is through anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what he does. So I guess he's going for the the one nil win, but. It's absolutely correct to surf him and then he can't do anything. Because at the moment the only way you can lose is if is if this guy scores. But it just literally the result literally doesn't matter to Gabias at all. So really whatever he does <laughs> doesn't matter at all. Yeah, blitz him with a line right, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, if this was a competitive game where a draw was acceptable, I would have gone back and blitzed him and then that's it. I haven't lost. Um, if you're going for the win, then fair enough, go for the win. But I would have probably played for the draw here 
in Zirkel's position, even though even though I didn't need to, because technically, right, if you get the draw, you've won the group. If Zirpil's lost this game, 1-0, and Saramol beat Slade Black Mage, 5-0, he could not top the group. So, there was a chat, there was a technical chance of Zirpil's not topping the group if he lost this game. I mean, a ludicrous small chance, but there was a chance of him not topping the group if he drew, if he lost. So, with that in mind, I would go for the draw to make one million percent certain. Uh, yeah, you could, you could, Razzle. No, uh, no, J5, this group is the one lizard, one rat, one undead, one human. The human teams are currently, there's two human teams and they're currently 0, zero 4 So, um, it's not looking good for Gabby Ass right now because I would definitely back Ceramol to beat Slade Black Mage in the last game and take the spot. But now he only needs to draw, right, if uh, Gabby Ass loses, which it sure looks like he's going to. He's got no re-roll, and he's got to roll all the dice. <laughs> oh, very good, Steve. <laughs> I could do that one, couldn't I? You know, we've got all the good Hellboy songs, and I could just do Jimmy Nail songs. <laughs> but the bad thing is, I'm worse at singing than Jimmy Nail. That's terrible, isn't it? I mean, 3-3, three, three, 1-D, and then what? Pow, and then <laughs> kill him, yeah, and then <laughs> and fall over. And uh, get your skink three diced and two plus to lose. Lazy, incorrect move. Should have done it with a wrestler up here. I'll forgive him. <laughs> it was a fun play, yeah. Oh, yeah, so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many times that's worked, J5. No, you wouldn't. It's obviously zero. <laughs> right. um, so there you go. Zerpils takes the win. 1-0 versus Gabias. It will take a little bit of time for the group to update. But, you know, we can look at this and see that Gabias is, uh, sorry, Zerpils is now on nine points, definitely qualified. Um, Gabias did not score, so remains on two touchdowns four. So now, yes, Ceramol, as long as he scores a touchdown, is qualified. Um, he doesn't have to win, lose or draw or anything. He just needs to score a touchdown. The tiebreaker is not touchdown difference. It is touchdown scored is the first tiebreaker. So, if he, yeah, he could lose 5-1 and he'll still qualify. So, yeah, ma massive, massive favourite to qualify now, Saramol. So, congratulations, Zerpils, commiserations, Gabby Ass. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.